Hi, uh, welcome back to part three of our uh, Open Nebula 4.0 home lab setup. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to uh, work on the hypervisors, uh, installing KVM and Open vSwitch on them, uh, as well as a little bit of uh, configuration for uh, the Open Nebula uh, one admin users there. So, in this uh, diagram here, uh, I'm just essentially showing uh, we sort of laid out in the uh, very initial introduction uh, video there. Uh, we're going to be working with four different hypervisors. Uh, the first two, um, just host names, KVM01 and 02. Uh, these are going to be uh, VMs running uh, under a VMware workstation on my uh, desktop PC. And uh, I also have two physical uh, servers, uh, KVM03 and 04, uh, that we'll add as well. Um, today we're going to be working specifically on um, this uh, KVM04 uh, host here, um, this guy. So um, just to give you an idea of what uh, we're actually uh, working on. So within the hypervisor, uh, again this will be uh, KVM04 that uh, we're working on, the physical uh, server. Uh, we're going to be installing uh, KVM, uh, Open vSwitch, and uh, also doing some what admin user setup. Um, the Open vSwitch uh, is essentially a, a virtual switch that uh, we'll be installing on each of the uh, KVM hypervisors. Um, we'll be connecting, sort of uh, adding a port here to our physical interface, um, and then uh, down the road, uh, what will happen as you add uh, VMs, there'll be uh, these uh, ports essentially added to the open v switch here that'll connect to uh, uh, the VMs. So again in this example uh, I'm going to be working on uh, the physical host uh, but one thing I should point out uh, for anyone that's working on the uh, um, virtual uh, machines under a VMware workstation or perhaps some other uh, hypervisor um, it'd just be important to uh, check that you have the proper um, virtualization feature set enabled uh, for it. So in the workstation you can check that by going under the uh, processors options here. You want to make sure that you have the uh, virtual Intel VTX, uh, EPT, the extended page tables, or uh, the AMD uh, features uh, enabled here. So ours was not set, so uh, I'm going to enable that now. So we'll need to uh, restart the uh, host there to uh, pick up that change. Uh, but one way just to verify it now that we know that it's not disabled or not enabled, excuse me, uh, on this host is to uh, check the CPU info. So we can uh, check for different flags. Um, I think it's a VMX for uh, Intel-based uh, processors and uh, SVM for uh, AMD. And we can see that uh, neither of those flags uh, show up there. So while it's restarting, I'm just going to uh, jump over onto my uh, PuTTY session here for the uh, KVM04, the physical host. And uh, while we're here and uh, just on that topic, uh, we can just verify the uh, VMX uh, flag is uh, present here for this host. And we can see it's uh, present there across all the uh, CPUs. So the install uh, of KVM and Open vSwitch is fairly straightforward. Uh, with Ubuntu, uh, there's some packages to install. Uh, there's a lot of uh, good references on the internet uh, for more information, as well as the uh, Open Nebula website. 
Uh, please check with the blog at uh, cloudology.com for this uh, part three tutorial. Um, it'll have a bunch of more information and links to uh, uh, more resources uh, to follow along. So basically we're just going to start off with installing some packages here. You can see some uh, for NFS as we'll be using uh, uh, some NFS mounts within the hypervisors for shared uh, data stores uh, as well as the um, a few Ruby and uh, um, other dependencies there. So let's go ahead and install those. I apologize if there's some uh, background noise coming through. I have the uh, physical server sitting just a few feet behind me, so uh, you might get some fan noise coming through. All right, so our uh, installs completed successfully there. So um, our next step uh, with the uh, libvirt install, uh, there's essentially a, um, a default bridge. Uh, that we want to uh, get rid of as we're not going to use it and uh, probably just cause us some uh, problems. So to get rid of it we're just going to uh, do a versh net destroy the default and uh, we're also just going to disable it from uh, starting up as well uh, Next we're just going to um, add some uh, configuration to our uh, interfaces uh, configuration file here. Um, I, I'm using a DHCP so we're just going to assign that to the uh, bridge interface and uh, there's also some uh, commands here for uh, our physical Ethernet zero interface uh, just to help it uh, come up uh, during, uh, during startup. So we're just basically going to echo out the information there to our Etsy network interfaces file. And uh, next we're just going to go ahead and add the uh, uh, open vSwitch bridge. Let's call it uh, bridge zero. Next, we're just going to add the add a port uh, to our uh, Open vSwitch bridge here, uh, connected to our physical uh, Ethernet Zero interface. Okay, so after a uh, reboot, uh, we can just verify uh, everything's working here. So uh, you can see our networking uh, came back and uh, was able to restore SSH uh, putty session here. And uh, we can also take a look at the Open vSwitch uh, configuration. And uh, yeah, we can see our uh, bridge uh, got created, um, our bridge zero interface, uh, as well as the uh, port, uh, physical port uh, that's attached to it there. Right, so the next step uh, is just to add uh, the one admin user and group to uh, all the hypervisors here. 
um, as well as uh, add that uh, one admin user to uh, the KVM and uh, uh, LibreD group. So we're going to use the same uh, group ID 1001 uh, that we used for the uh, Open Nebula server in the uh, previous uh, videos. Create our uh, one admin user uh, with that primary group. I'm just going to add uh, one admin to the KVM group. And same thing for the Liberty. We can just verify that. So that's essentially it for the uh, KVM and Open vSwitch install. Uh, there's going to be a little bit more configuration, uh, especially for our data stores uh, on the uh, hypervisors uh, coming up in uh, future tutorials and uh, blog posts. So uh, keep an eye out for those. Uh, but for now, uh, that's it, and thanks for watching.